So it's Sunday night, and I have an update of uh, certain things going on with the engine and associated ancillary stuff. Uh, I'm going to show you this video here in a minute. It's called uh, something really weird. Dreadlocks in a tailspin. It's pretty wild. But first, let's take a look at this. So for the past 24 hours, I built these two bottom units. All of these are the Speed Wino electronic control unit, engine control unit. Allow you to convert your engine to EFI. They also support boost. I'm sitting here thinking, who's pausing. So, uh, when I figured uh, that I wanted to make sure that the 23 horsepower VG Air is fuel injected and run by a computer so that I can do other stuff and get more power out of it, I chose the Speed Winos because they're pretty cheap and full function. Problem is, with the chip shortage, you can't get anything. So I did a lot of finagling to get all this electronic components. This I had to get from China and uh, the boards I had to get from Australia. And then everything else came from DigiKey. And so after I put in orders to get all this stuff, I realized I don't even want to use these. They're the wrong ones. I want to use this one up here, which I built previously and showed you. Uh, this one only runs two cylinders, which is what I want. These run four cylinders. And they would run my two-cylinder, but I want smaller and lighter. So I built this. I showed that in previous videos. So in the last 24 hours, uh, my boards came in Friday from Australia. And that was the only thing I was missing. So... Went out, worked on the runway all day Saturday, and then the rain came in, and so I said, well, let's go see if I can build these boards. So it looks like I built them. So this is called the uh, NO2C, no overhang two-cylinder. It sits on top of an Arduino unit, which is exactly the same size. That's why it's called no overhang. Uh, this is the one I finally settled on, and I did a detailed video on this previously about what it does. Um, these were the original speed we know and these are the latest version 0.4.3d or something like that and uh, so anyhow I, I just built these they're not even an hour old um, they have everything on them and for some reason Australia sent me a green board and a black board so if you're asking yourself why are they different just the colors and for some reason that's what he had in stock so I'll keep the top one to use on the VG23 Air and these two I'm going to throw on eBay and see if I can recoup my cost. I think uh, my total cost to build these, not including my labor, was about $102. So I don't know what they used to claim these costs, but all of these electronics have doubled. I mean all the stuff's more expensive now. This unit here that I had to get from China, it came with the NO2C when I bought it from uh, as a kit from uh, a Speedwino marketplace but these aren't available anywhere else this is the map sensor they've been discontinued and I was able to locate them in China and they the retail was about 11 to 17 dollars before and so I did pretty good because I got them for 44 dollars 22 dollars a piece so that's not bad considering you can't find them anywhere so in the background I'm slowly building up all the uh, stuff that I need in order to do this that's why I haven't bothered to get the engine yet, because I need a lot of other stuff. And um, one of the things that's going to come into play as we start doing the engine is, um, like I said before, once we get the engine, we're actually going to tear the whole thing apart, apart and weigh every bit of it, down to the grams, which will help us uh, as far as trying to lighten it up and make decisions later on. But then we're going to put it back together in a completely stock uh, configuration and do all the testing there and convert it to EFI, and uh, then we're going to go from there. Uh, possibly going to put that $1,700 boost on it while it's still in a stock configuration, except for probably the camshaft. Uh, mainly because I've got to get a uh, um, a crankshaft wheel on the camshaft for the EFI unit, and there's a governor there on the existing camshaft that goes away with mod uh, with uh, aftermarket camshafts, and that'll give me room for that uh, wheel. So one thing we'll probably change right off the bat is the camshaft. Plus the stock camshafts are terrible; they break. So uh, one of the things I came up with is uh, I, I want to see how well that crankshaft's balanced. And so I had to go learn how to do that. And then I found a way to actually make a crankshaft balancer using some accelerometer, accelerometer chips and uh, a HAL sensor. And uh, that looks pretty simple to do. I can actually use my metal lathe as the base to turn it. So I'll probably do that next, you know, build a crankshaft balancer for about 20 bucks. 
And uh, then I'll have to figure out where I'm going to get some bob weights for it because since it's a V-twin, you're not going to be able to just run it without bob weights on it. And uh, you're going to need a crankshaft balancer anyhow because when I, when I look at all these people buying these aftermarket pistons, which I'm not going to change the pistons out right away or the rods or anything, but they're using billet aluminum and stuff. And I'm like, well, how are you getting the crankshaft rebalanced? Or are you just putting it together like that? Because uh, I'm pretty sure you're going to have to rebalance the crankshaft. So anyhow, that's about it for tonight. Uh, I'll leave you with uh, this. Th this is pretty interesting. So uh, I was like, what in the world airplane is that? It looks like a Kolb, but actually it's from Australia. It's called a Dragonfly. And if you look at the tail, you'll notice he has a cable hanging off of it. He's using it to tow those hang gliders up in the air. And uh, also people that want to skydive. Uh, this was pretty interesting. You know, this guy evidently knows how to fly. This plane is evidently pretty tough.